all these varieties of leaves. No one leaf is similar to the other, right? There is difference in color, there is difference in their shape. In a previous video, we learned that variety in leaves is due to the difference in shape, margin, apex, surface, and the extent of incision on these leaves, right? These constitute leaf characteristics. In this video, we are going to learn a little bit more about the different leaf characteristics. But have you thought about why a leaf would put so much effort into evolving into these different types? Just think about it for a second. What appears as beauty for us is survival for the plants. And these designs are not random. They have precisely evolved them based upon the various abiotic factors that they live in. These factors constitute the sunlight, the water, the wind speed, the soil, etc. Okay, so now let's get into the video. There are plenty of leaf characteristics, okay? But we are going to focus on three main characters. The first is the types of leaves. So this is based on the leaf margin. The second is venation. Venation is the arrangement of the veins and veinlets on the leaf. So the pattern of the veins on the leaf surface. And third, we have phyllotaxy. Phyllotaxy is the arrangement of leaves on a stem. Let's look at each of these characters one by one. There are two types of leaves. The first is called as a simple leaf. A leaf is said to be simple if the lamina is entire. So lamina is the leaf surface if it's entire. And if the incisions on the lamina do not reach the midrib. So incisions are these cuts that give shape to the leaf. So here you can see that the leaf is not just a line. And it has these small shapes, right? So there is an incision here. But this incision remains on the outer surface. It has not reached the midrib. So in that case, this is a simple leaf. The other type is called as a compound. In a compound leaf, the incision has reached till the midrib and it has given rise to a smaller leaf which is called as a leaflet. Now, irrespective of whether it is a simple leaf or a compound leaf, we can see that there is a bud that is present in the axle of the petiole. But this bud is not present in case of a leaflet. The compound leaves have different varieties in them. The first one is called as the pinnately compound. So, in this pinnately compound, we see that there is uh, a common axis which is called as the rachis and the leaves are arranged on either side of the rachis. So these are the other varieties of uh, pinnately compound leaves and in all these cases you can see the presence of a rachis. It's basically the midrib of a pinnately compound leaf. The other one is called as the palmately compound leaf. So here we can see the leaflets they all attach at a single common point. So we can see it here and here we can see it here. The number of leaflets don't matter here. The point of attachment is what is important here. So this is palmately compound. Now I can show you two other varieties here. Do you think these are palmately compound? Well, although they look like they are palmately compound, they are not. The reason is that there are incisions. See, there are deep incisions, but the incisions don't reach the midrib here, right? So, if suppose this leaf was uh, designed in this particular way, right? So, you can see individual leaflets or if this leaf was designed in this particular way, they could have been palmate. But here, they are not and therefore, they are not palmately compound. Next is venation. We know that venation is the arrangement of veins on these leaves. So you can see different patterns in all these leaves I have shown here. And we already know that veins are very important for the leaves because they help in um, uh, supporting the structure of the leaf and they also help as transport channels to bring food and water into the leaf, right? 
Now, when the veins uh, branch and they form a network, such kind of a venation is called as a reticulate venation. And it has been noted that dicots usually show reticulate venation. And the other type is called as a parallel venation. So, when the veins run parallel to each other within the lamina, they are called as parallel venation. Uh, and parallel venation is usually noticed in monocots. So, this is a single leaf and we can see the individual lines running here. And the same thing over here. Here, although it is 90 degree, this is also a type of parallel. And here, this is in case of a coconut leaf. Um, you, if you would see individual leaves, you will still see that the veins are running parallel. And finally, we come to phyllotaxy. So, phyllotaxy is how the leaves arrange themselves on a stem. So, the purpose of phyllotaxy for the plant is so that it doesn't overcrowd the leaves on one side and all the leaves get an opportunity to be exposed to the sun. In a way, it is optimizing the amount of sunlight that the particular plant receives. So, the first type is called as an alternate phyllotaxy. So, in this type, we have a um, single leaf that arises on the nodes, but on the alternate nodes, not in the same node, right? So, for example, we see that this is the main branch and then we see alternate leaves coming up. So, this is called as an alternate phyllotaxy. The second one is called as opposite. So, in opposite, we see two leaves that are coming in the same node, but on the opposite side. So, this is opposite phyllotaxy. We have an example here. Um, here we can see the branch and the leaves are arising on both the sides, but opposite to each other. And the final variety is called as world. World is when two or more leaves arise at the single node. And this is called as a world phyllotaxy. So, for example, here in these mango leaves, you can see a common branch. And then you can see multiple leaves are coming at the same node. Right? So, this is the third variety. 